The New York Times had an article last week about Senator Charles Schumer taking a trip to Wall Street to get Wall Street to support his campaign and the campaign of other Democrats. But as the paper put it, Schumer's reception was not quite warm. Quote, the city's titans of finance at a recent closed door meeting accused him, Schumer, of being insufficiently pro Wall Street. One indignant fellow stood up and demanded his donation back. Now remember, this is Charles Schumer, the man who practically single handedly brought about the deregulation of Wall Street, a deregulation that eventually brought our economy to the brink of collapse. Now, that story reminds me of a question that I get again and again when I talk about the effect of money in politics. As one person put it in a recent talk in D.C., does campaign money really have an effect on policy? And then answering his own question, he went on to say, in his view, money has no effect on policy in D.C., but when we watch this grotesque spectacle of Democrats and Republicans racing to Wall Street, sucking up to Wall Street to get Wall Street to fund their campaigns, while still there is no financial reform that has passed this Congress, I think we have an answer to the question my friend asked at that meeting in Washington. Yes, indeed, money has an effect on policy in D.C., for while the American economy teeters on the edge, Congress has now taken a time out so they can race around the country and raise money from the very people who caused the collapse rather than changing the law in a way that will guarantee no more such collapse. Now, I tell this story to put in context the recent decision by the Supreme Court in the case of Citizens United versus FEC, a case which established a free speech right for corporations in the last 60 days before an election to spend from the corporate treasury on independent campaign propaganda that pushes one side in a campaign against the other. This decision has led to frantic efforts by people, especially on the progressive side of politics, to reverse, as they put it, the Supreme Court's ruling, and once again empower Congress to, quote, regulate corporate speech. Now, in my view, while I think there are fundamental flaws in the Supreme Court's decision, this response is a fundamental mistake. For we need to recognize that while when we think of corporation in a case like this Citizens United case, our mind races to companies like Goldman Sachs and Exxon and Halliburton, and our fear is not so much corporate speech, but corporate control, the kind of control evinced by this image of a young, indignant fellow demanding his donation back while some pathetic politician tries to convince him that, yes, in fact, the politicians do listen to Wall Street and do do exactly what Wall Street wants, even when doing what Wall Street wants brings our economy to the brink of collapse. We need to recognize that when others think of this corporation in the case of Citizens United, they think not of these big corporations, but of Citizens United, a nonprofit simply trying to engage in political speech before an election. And indeed, as increasingly Americans respond to this case, they see the issue as the ability of Congress to regulate speech, even speech of the small guy. As one call-in radio person put it in a show that I was on last week, you're against the small guy, as he put it. You want to censor speech. Now, we should not be on the side of the censor. We should not be so inept as to allow this issue to be framed in this way, as if it's a question of censorship. For none of us should oppose free speech by anyone or anything. What we should oppose is this system of dependence, this corruption that has become Washington today. This practice of sucking up to the Wall Streets of the world rather than doing the job that Congress was elected to do. This practice of running beauty contests in front of the very people who gave us this collapse rather than solving the problems that led to that collapse. Now, this corruption will not change simply by reversing Citizens United versus the FEC. 
because reversing that case merely brings us back to the corrupt Congress we had one month ago. And if you want a real response to this problem, a response to this case of Citizens United, then it's this dependency that we have to change. We have to fix that dependency by fixing Congress first. Now, the only way we could do that is to adopt the idea that Teddy Roosevelt gave us a hundred years ago, the idea of citizen-funded elections. A bill now in Congress, the Fair Elections Now Act, would give us, through a voluntary opt-in system, a campaign financing world where contributions are limited to $100 by any one citizen, a limit that is then matched by the state in a four to one match. Now that system would at least begin the process to end this practice of sucking up to Wall Street and the other interests like Wall Street and begin to support that practice of an alternative system here by supporting more free speech. Now, please, we have a chance here and we cannot lose it, this chance for real change by pursuing changes likely to be deemed unconstitutional by a court very sensitive to make sure that its constitutional rulings not be reversed by Congress. We need to fix Congress first by building a system of campaign funding that at least gives them the chance to act independently. So tell your representatives to join the list of co-sponsors to this bill, now 133 co-sponsors in the House, and demand that they make this at least part of any response to Citizens United. For this would represent real change in the way Washington works. And we need to remember what candidate Obama told us our objective should be more than two years ago, as he put it, if we're not willing to take up that fight, the fight to, as he put it, change the way Washington works, then real change, change that will make a lasting difference in the lives of ordinary Americans, will keep getting blocked by the defenders of the status quo. We need to take up that fight. Go to our website, fixcongressfirst.org, and help us today. Thank you very much.